So for all of human evolution, basically, we've had some kind of forced or chosen fasting pattern baked into life. So this, this is a device that probably evolved for starvation, which was part of our life, actually. Nobody gets right. starved in, right. in most countries, but in old times, we would go through starvation frequently. If the winter's brutal. You're not going to eat for a while. You're going to go into starvation mode, not because you're choosing to fast, because you're worried about your health or you're trying to lose weight, but because there's no food around. And even though if you go back far enough, you know, star- starvation was just a part of life. It's kind of interesting also that most cultures, even since you know we had farming and everything, retained some kind of fasting ritual. So for all of human evolution, basically, we've had some kind of forced or chosen fasting pattern baked into life. And even even in in, in, in more recent times, so people wanted to get religious inspiration. They go into fasting. Yeah. So maybe looking for that change in the brain. What do we know from the biochemical point of view that during those uh, periods, both actually both exercise and starvation, you have a kind of uh, uterus, like a, a, a low level stress that will produce, uh, will increase autophagy, will uh, increase uh, release uh, the a clearance of uh, misfolded proteins in, mm-hmm. in neurons. So. Um, maybe that was uh, incorporated into culture because people felt better, felt uh, felt good, and actually that prepared them for the real starvation that came later. This preconditioning hmm. is something that we do uh, when we do exercise all the time, right? Because we do low-level exercise, we are prepared for the high-level exercise. Right. Uh, that training, this preconditioning of the body, is, uh, is something that is good for your neurons, good for your astrocytes, that uh, cleans them from uh, from stuff that yeah, is not yeah. uh, wanted. 